I miss doing shows, I really do. If there's a chance to in between the wickets or right after the wickets, I will of course do my best to do it. I think I just have to sort of like my relationship to music. I have to redefine my relationship to doing shows because I think that's something that suffered a lot as well because of my own trauma, my own sort of like lack of boundaries when I was younger, I think it allowed for me to sort of have a, an anxious association with it. But I think that was where I was. So being here now and kind of, I like look forward to it. I'm excited to redefine my relationship to touring and to doing shows when time allows. But it is something that I'm like, yes, I would love to. I just don't know when. It's one of my favorites as well. I think my top three are You Can't Be Friends, Imperfect For You, and Eternal Sunshine. But I think the most beautiful thing about Imperfect For You is that we all know those people that we feel that way about and that we are so lucky to have mm. because they see it all, they hold space for it all, and it fits in their imperfections too. Like we're so lucky to have friends, family, loved ones that are just so accepting and real with us no matter no matter what it's like such an important song in my opinion because we live in a time where everything is boiled down but that song kind of demands room for nuance and humanness and complexity that we're so used to like being stripped of these days like no matter what is happening i feel so incredibly fine because of the people that I have in my life. Mm. I know they would never, you know what I mean? Mm. They're just the best. I love them. They're right about everything. They're brilliant. <laughs> it was just like a beautiful thing to see these faces of people that I love and have worked with and survived so much with <laughs> for so long. Yeah. And this is like our first time that we've done this, that it's felt this way for me. And also that I've been able to give my all to it this way, even to do like interviews and stuff. I don't really do that kind of stuff, but I'm like excited to, does that make sense? I'm I mean, excited, I'm like proud and grateful and I feel like, oh my goodness, what a gift to be able to make this art. And for so long, I think I was in, um, hiding from it, hiding from my success or from what comes with it. And it was really impacting my ability to be able to love what I do for a long time. Oh my God, I don't want to get ugh, choked up, but, 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 but. Um, but yeah, it was really making me resentful, I think, for a little bit of time. And I don't feel that way anymore. So and I feel like I'm able to, to let go of that yeah. and enjoy it. And um, I feel really proud and grateful for that. Sorry to like go there, but it feels very different. I think that's why I was so choked up, even just playing them the, the songs, because I was like, whoa, this feels so different this time. Between like that, the unpredictability of what we were just discussing, versus also like the game of it all, was something that when I started making music when I was young, I didn't really expect that or sign up for that. Like I just loved music. I didn't know it had to be a game. I didn't know people were gonna try to, to hit me against people I love. I didn't know that, you know, it was gonna do such strange things. And I think I was very young and processing all of that, I kind of married that to music in my head for a while. I was like, oh, well, I can't continue doing that. Showcasing um, both sides of it is kind of what I tried my very best to balance in the music is, you know, this feeling can be true, and this feeling can also be true simultaneously. And I think that's something that we can ignore sometimes. I kind of learned that I wasn't really listening to myself in a lot of, in a lot of areas where I, I could have been. It's like my, my nervous system was screaming at me to make certain changes for a long time, but I think I, I, I was kind of a person who wasn't listening. I don't know, I, I just made, I tried to listen to it more. That's mainly what I mean. Yeah. Like for me, I was like, oh, I'm not listening to myself. I need to start listening to my, why am I doing this? You know, it's not protective to ignore these feelings. It's actually 
counterproductive. It's actually more harmful to not. In art, in human connection, in the people I love, in laughter and creating something you're proud of, um, there's so much. Today I'll say definitely I'll focus it on the art. There's so much magic in art. The only possible way to survive is with gratitude, is to stay rooted in gratitude and sort of be thankful every day for everything. Mm -hmm. It's so easily taken away and it's so easy to get wrapped up in negativity or what, you know, challenges are here in the day. So many people can relate to knowing that something isn't right but loving so much and wanting to stay and wanting to figure it out and that cycle that can happen in the film. I think that's why the film is so beloved is because so many people can relate to it and I think it kind of fell into place that these songs had little tidbits of that theme. I was really young. I'm a massive, I'm a massive Jim Carrey fan. I don't know if you know this but my first screen name was Jim Carrey Fan 42. So, <laughs> so Adorable. I was definitely very young. Yeah, uh, it's always been a favorite of mine. What's it been like meeting him? Thrilling. He's even better. You know how sometimes you get nervous to meet your people yeah. because you never know how they're going to be, and it's very scary. He couldn't be better. I love him so much more after meeting him and um, working with him on Kidding. What's Max Mon like? I just, <laughs> I just want to meet him. He is. Awesome. He's, he's like the biggest mystery, the most successful pop producer. He the just turned into an absolute child. That was my favorite thing. Just want to meet What's Max Martin like? No, he's the best person in the world. I think who he is is who he is as a human being, and the fact that like his success and all that he's done hasn't at all inflated his ego or his humanness, like he's just the coolest guy ever. He's so nice. He's kind to every single person he encounters. And he's nurturing in the studio. Like he, how does he so get the nurturing. truth? Like how does he get those performances and that truth out and yet make it feel like it's my life? He's very thoughtful when it comes to things like that. Cause usually I'll go too far. Like I'll spill way too, I'll, I'll be way too, you know, I'll, I, I like to write like no one's ever gonna hear it mm. ever. Mm. And then sometimes I, want to dial it back or change things or redo things. And um, he's got such an amazing ability to ride that balance and know what people need to hear and what I need to say too. Like he'll stand up for me. He'll be like, no, you deserve to say that.